And so this city series of videos, we're going to look at the process of doing a, tr a, a supervised classification in ArcGIS. Um, so the process basically is to generate some training data, generate a model, and then apply that model to new data. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video specifically is generate our training data. Okay, so first thing you want to do is make sure you're clicked on the image that you're wanting to classify. So I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on this full extent. And then if we go to imagery, then we should be able to go to classification tools and start generating training data. So what we want to do specifically is do training to go to training sample manager and then we're going to build basically our training samples here so by default it comes up with a scheme that's um, from the national land cover data set but we can't really differentiate all those classes here so we're going to go through and delete some of these uh, we will use water uh, we use developed mm, we'll leave barren in Forest has subcategories. We really can't differentiate that here, so I'm going to remove these subcategories. And we don't need shrub, so I'm going to get rid of that. And um, and then hmm, yeah, if we'll just well, these are kind of hard to differentiate. I'm just going to get rid of. We'll just leave this as herbaceous and we'll get rid of wetland. So we're gonna just try to shoot for these five categories. All right, so once we have that set up, we can actually start digitizing training data. So the way this is designed is really to do the, the data as polygons. Um, there are ways to do it as points, which I think sometimes is more preferable, but um, we're just gonna do with polygon for now. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a circle tool because it's easy, and I'm just going to start digitizing. So you want to be clicked on the class that you're interested in, so I'm clicked on water, and I can start gathering water samples. You can either do this using, you know, like drawing a polygon or drawing a rectangle or a freehand drawing or whatever. The key thing here is you want to make sure that all of the pixels that occur in your examples within the extent of your examples are actually the class of interest. So you don't want it to like overlap or overshoot into another another category. Another key characteristic here is to make sure that you capture a wide variety of examples so you can really characterize the full like spectral variability in your classes. You know, like water generally is pretty, um, it's generally pretty um, differentiable, so maybe we don't need a lot, but I've generally found that the best thing you can, the best thing you can do to really get a decent classification is to, um, yeah, sorry, is, is to uh, make sure you really get a lot of good quality training data spread over your image. So this is going to take me a while, so I'm not going to do, I'm not going to, you know, keep the video on the whole time. So what I want to do is just maybe show you some examples for different data, for each category. And then um, I'll show the video off, and then we'll come back when we're ready to start the training process. Okay, um, so that would, there's just some examples of water. Again, I'll go through and grab some more examples out here. Um, probably should try to grab at least a few in the streams, even though they're kind of narrow. Um, okay, so let's look at developed now. Another thing you may want to do while you're working through this process is to um, um, change the band combinations. You may find it's it's easier to differentiate certain features or or see certain things in different band combinations. So here I'm just in the city here and I'm just trying to grab some examples. Bear, um, developed areas tend to be kind of hard because they tend to be a mix of things. You know, like if you zoom into a residential area, you're gonna have like, 
you know, yards and roads and houses and some maybe some impervious surface. So generally, it's not going to be you know, like a it's going to be barely heterogeneous, um, but that's just how it goes. So again, those are some examples of the develop class. Again, you want to try to spread them out as much as possible. So I'm going to zoom in to a couple different towns here and make sure that I get examples from from each town. Or not every town. That would be kind of time consuming, but you know, at least spread them out. Okay. Um, let's do forest next. So here I'm in the forest class. Another thing you got to be careful is make sure you're clicked on the right category, right? You don't want to accidentally, you know, put forest examples in like the develop class or something. Um, that's a common mistake if you're just not paying attention. If you worry about that, you can always like go back through and just look at each of your examples and make sure that they're actually representative of what you're interested in. You know, in this area, there's definitely some like topographic gradients. We've got some pretty steep mountains. Um, so lots of elevation change. So that's another reason why you want to make sure that you spread your samples around as much as possible. And again, you don't have to do circles. It's just, I thought for this example that would make sense. Um, but you can, you know, freehand draw or draw polygons or whatever. Right, there's some examples of forest. Um, let's zoom in to herbaceous now. So these are primarily going to be these types of features. So these... Uh, vegetated fields. This would be like crop or pasture. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. Again, this is um, this is in Sweden. I don't really have any local knowledge in this area. Sometimes local knowledge can be very, very helpful. Um, things might look a little different in different landscapes and different societies that have different you know, land use practices and whatnot. Yeah, so there's a ton of agricultural fields. Um, don't We're not going to be able to draw in all of these obviously so again you're just trying to get a nice representative sample um, across the image and then the other one we haven't done let is barren so I'm grab that I'm going to include like any bare fields so these red looking fields are probably bare if you're not really sure again maybe going to appearance and swapping out um, <clears throat> To a different yes yeah, so you can kind of see those are like bare agricultural fields so you might want to again play around with different band combinations that can be helpful to try to differentiate these things okay so I'm going to leave this video here for now um, if you're doing something similar or trying to follow along with this you want to take some time and draw samples. Um, I'm going to probably spend at least a half an hour on this. Um, and then whenever I'm ready and I have my training samples, we'll come back and we'll start looking at um, actually doing the training and classification process. All right, so we're back after um, spending about an hour collecting some training data. You can see the data now kind of spread across the map extent. I go back to the image classification window. You can see all the examples in there. Um, so anyway, we have some training data. They're probably not perfect, but I think it's good enough at least for, for this demonstration. Um, all right, so first off, before you want to save your training data. If you click Save here, it'll save them. I've had issues where I have trouble finding them afterwards, and I'm not sure why. So another option is you can do a Save As. So basically, I did a Save As and saved it into my folder. Um, as the Zurich training set here. So those should be all the samples. So if we open this up, you can see that I digitized 1,200 samples, and you can see the different categories 
there in the class name. So the class name is the actual name, and the class value is the stand and code for that category. Okay, so we have our training data. Um, I also thought it might be good to incorporate some additional data layers into the classification to potentially improve their results. Um, so I'm going to turn on the image here too. There we go. Um, so I calculated some, some additional layers. Um, I calculated NDVI, which we looked at in a prior video. I calculated this moisture index, which does a pretty good job of highlighting the water there and like moisture and whatnot. Uh, I calculated a burn up in, or a, sorry a, a build up index, and then I brought I calculated the first four principal components and brought those in, and then um, that's the last one, and then lastly I calculated a, a, a spatial filter to try to highlight edges a bit using like a convolution method. Okay, so those are all of the data layers. So we should be ready now to actually perform our training. So note that you can do this from the, if you go to um, imagery, you can do it from the, the classification tool wizard or settings there. I'm just gonna grab it from the geoprocessing window. So all this is in the image analyst toolbox and then in the segmentation and classification sub toolbox. And what we wanna do now is train an algorithm. So what we're going to do specifically is train a random forest algorithm, which is a type of like machine learning algorithm. Okay, so I'm going to click on that tool, train random tree classifier. Uh, the input raster is going to be our image. The input training samples is going to be our training data. And then we're going to use the class value field. That's going to be our unique identifier. And this is going to save out a, 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 a classifier definition file or a .ecd file. Um, I'm going to move this to another location just so I know where it is. So I'm going to move it to here and we'll just call it RF model and then e.ecd save. So that's our model. And then note here you can add in additional rasters. So we're going to try to do that and see if it, it'll work. So we're going to add in the NDVI. Oh, I guess you can only add in one. Additional rasters. Um, yeah, I guess, let's see. I guess we can only pick one. So I'm going to grab, we'll just, do, we'll just use the NDVI. So we're going to try to grab some additional ones for there. Um, information from that layer. A couple other things we have here. We have max number of trees, max tree depth, max number of samples per class. So those are all like hyperparameters that you can set that may impact the algorithm. Um, unfortunately, the only thing that we can, can so the, unfortunately there's no real way to know the best settings other than to play around with it or do some type of hyperparameter op optimization, which I don't think is available in ARC. So we'll just leave it set to the defaults. Um, you can also incorporate information from um, image segments um, if you're going to use a, a segment-based classification. Um, so we're not going to do that in this component. Okay, so that should be everything that we need. And if we hit run, this should generate that classification file. Note that at this point, it's not actually generating an like a classified image. It's just generating a model that's going to be used later to actually classify an image. Okay, so set it completed. So that's that. And while we're at it, let's just make another model. So we're going to do this with train support vector machine classifier. So this is just a different machine learning algorithm. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to feed it our image, our training samples, class value field, we'll change this to SVM model dot ECD, and um, we'll also give it the NDVI. I actually thought you could give it more than one variable, so um, anyway, that's why I did, um, that's why I created all those, which was apparently pointless. So um, anyway, we can, and this was a hyperparameter, we can leave that, and we're not going to send any segmentation output or inputs. 
Okay, so that should do it. So let's run this. And again, this is just training a model. It's not actually, we're not using it to predict out to an image yet. Okay, well, I think we'll just end the video here. And then in the next video, once our models are produced, we're going to go in and actually classify the images.